are broad nibs more prone to having issues than fine nibs? Um, this is a great question. Obviously, I've written with a lot of different pens. Not only do I have experience hands-on with pens, but I also know uh, very, you know, realistically how many we end up seeing trouble with because, you know, we're not the manufacturer, so we don't necessarily handle like warranty repair issues per se, but a lot of times we're the first point of contact for anybody that's having issues or specifically if it's in within our, our return window, um, we will be the first ones to kind of understand when anybody's having uh, any potential challenges with said pen or ink or whatever. And, you know, we look at different different numbers and different stats and things like that. Um, so I don't have any like hard numbers to share like across the board fines versus broads that data is um, complicated to pull. But um, what I can say is, is just kind of from years of being in the business and my own experience, um, I would not say that broad nibs have more are more prone to having issues. It's more prone to certain issues than fine nibs. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just break that down a little bit for you about why each might have some issues. Um, so, but, but as, as a general statement, I would say no. Uh, they don't have more problems than fine nibs. So, um, for one, fine nibs usually have more of an issue. Uh, if they have an issue, it might be with flow, like flow keeping up. Um, partly because, you know, usually they're, they're adjusted so the flow is not quite as generous because when you're writing fine, you just don't need to put as much ink down. Um, and you're trying to maybe write on a paper that's slightly more absorbent. You don't want to put as much ink down maybe because then it just it spreads and your handwriting can look really blobby and, and not as defined. So they intentionally designed those pens to not put as much ink down and just naturally the capillary action if you have less uh, kind of uh, surface area on the very tipping of the nib that's actually touching the paper it's not going to draw the ink through as quickly um, on a fine nib as it would for a broad. It just kind of works that way across the board across all brands. Of course you can you can open up the tines you can spread those out you can increase the flow or decrease the flow on any pen I mean, theoretically, maybe not not you, uh, you know, in, in theory, a, a human could. Um, <laughs> but it is possible to do that. But in general, generally speaking, just the natural kind of physics of the way it works, fine nibs are going to put a little, a little less ink down than broad nibs. And the reason that can cause some flow issues is if you maybe have some you know, dust and, and paper fibers and stuff like that just after using the pen for a long time and you maybe haven't cleaned it out or, you know, it's kind of sitting out for a while, it kind of dries out. It's just because there's a little less ink flowing through it, it's a little more prone to um, having some like, you know, s s hard flow issues um, because of like blockage and, and stuff like that. So you, they need to be cleaned, maybe just a little bit more. They're not quite as accommodating there. Um, and then if you're using any type of like shimmering ink or ink with a high sheen or anything like that, um, it's just less, less stuff is flowing through. So it's going to be a little more restricted. You know, it's just like if you have a garden hose, uh, versus if you have a fire hose, you know, you're, you, if you, it's easier to constrict a garden hose than it is a fire hose. You know, it's easier to stop that just by pinching it. So it's kind of, kind of a similar concept sort of, uh, with a fountain pen. So generally if you're going to have flow issues, it might, it might happen a little more with a fine nib with some of those particular issues. You have different flow issues with the broad, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, it can also feel scratchy, like you just have less surface area, less area of the tip of the nib on a fine nib that's actually touching the paper. So it's a little more sensitive to being out of alignment. Just naturally, you're gonna feel, um, you know, more of the, the bumps in the road, so to speak, if you have less surface area there. You know, it's sort of like if you're, you know, on roller skates versus driving a car. Now, maybe that's not the best analogy, but you know, obviously like the wheels are smaller, there's less, there's less there to kind of absorb whatever you might feel. So just, um, they can be a little more sensitive in that way. Um, so that you'll usually deal with the scratchiness and, and um, feedback issues on a fine much more than a broad. Um, yeah, uh, and then let's see here, what else? Uh, I think that covered it. Um, broad nibs, so yes, usually wetter, usually feel smoother, just kind of across the board. It's part of why people like broads. Um, but usually the problem, and this is pretty much the one most universal problem that we see here with broad nibs, not with all broads, but the, the number one problem we see with them um, is usually what's called baby's bottom. Um, and that is kind of a, a consequence of the way that the nibs are smoothed, the way they're ground. Um, this is a little more prominent on gold nibs actually than, than steel. Uh, and essentially what this is, this is you, the result of it is gonna be, you're gonna have 
uh, maybe some starting issues where you'll do like half a stroke and then it'll start to write. Um, so that's called starting. And then you might have skipping where if you're in the middle of writing words, or you maybe dot an I or something like that, it just won't, it won't dot. So the reason that's happening is because if you look at the tip of the nib, right? So it's round. If you're looking straight at the tip of the nib, there's gonna be a slit down the middle. Well, it's not a perfectly round circle, right? Because there needs to be just a little bit of an opening here because if you think about it, when they cut the initial grind, and I'm trying to do this with my hands, it's a little awkward, but you know, when they cut the initial slit, right? Down the middle of that tip and all the way down into the nib, you are gonna end up with a very, very sharp edge here at the bottom. It's gonna feel very scratchy. So they have to smooth that out a little bit. And the way that you do that work by hand, there's different manufacturers can do it different ways. But essentially the way that you do it, like if a Nibmeister was doing it, is they're gonna lift one of the tines and they're gonna take a very, very fine, um, you know, micro mesh or sandpaper, um, some sort of abrasive. And they're gonna just round over that inside bottom piece of the tip of that nib. And I mean, we're talking like, this is like fractions of a millimeter here. It's like such a small amount, you really visually can't even see it. Um, but you gotta take off that edge, otherwise when you are writing with the nib, you know, this is the nib, ooh, moving along, writing on the edge of the page, if there's any amount of pressure or any rotation of the pen, you, it's, that edge is gonna catch, right? So you have to smooth that edge over a little bit or it's gonna be really, really feedbacky. And there's the tolerances, they're incredibly narrow. So um, you can get variances, even when, you, when you're doing, you know, a trained professional doing this a lot, there can be some variances. So you gotta, you gotta take it a little bit at a time and do it. What happens if you end up smoothing that over too much, that's when you end up with this effect where that inside part of the slit of the tip of the nib ends up having a really big gap right there. That's what's referred to as baby's bottom because again, it's round and it has you know, a, a crack of sorts, right? Uh, and it's just, it's too big of a gap there where the paper meets the bottom of that nib where that has been smoothed over like that. Um, and the capillary action can break. The ink actually kind of sits up off the paper a little bit. And it's not until you press down a little bit. And when you press down, it increases the flex the spread of the tines a little bit, which forces more ink down through, then the ink makes contact with the paper and it starts writing. So really the way to fix baby's bottom is you gotta smooth out, you gotta, you gotta basically smooth out the, the cheeks of the baby's bottom. I didn't come up with this term. This is what's known in the industry, but hey, for better or for worse. So you gotta, you gotta smooth out the cheeks so that you can get, you know, kind of back to a normal level of, of a gap there. It's gotta be a little bit of a gap, but not too much. It's, it's very fine tolerances. It's very hard work to get that done. This tends to happen more on broad nibs for whatever reason. And it happens more on gold nibs because, you know, if you are in a production setting and you're trying to crank these nibs out, which, you know, can happen with, with you know, mass produced pens, um, uh, what happens is the gold can actually flex a little bit uh, as, you're, as you're putting it to whatever type of smoothing apparatus you might be working on. Uh, and when that flexes out, that can actually smooth over that inside edge just a little too much. It writes really smooth and it writes great, and especially if you're dip testing it or writing it with a fresh inked pen, the amount of ink that's in there is gonna be heavier than it would be when it's kind of worked its way through the initial inking and you're just working more drawing ink from the reservoir. That takes a lot of time. Like if you think about it in a production setting, to go through that whole process, write with it enough to where you're actually getting the flow through the nib. There's ways to compensate for that and some manufacturers have figured that out maybe a little better than others. Um, and it depends on individual writing style and writing pressure. There's a lot of variables here, but even still the, way, the, the, the end result that we see is that there's more of an issue with this baby's bottom on broader nibs. Because again, there's just, there's more, there's more surface area that goes so that you can, there's further up for the crack to be able to hide that ink and, and not have that happen. On a fine nib, you're just not gonna have as big of a, as big of a kind of a divot there. Um, so that's what ends up happening with, with broad nibs more than fine nibs. But other than that, pretty much most of the other issues happen actually more with fine nibs than broad nibs. So um, again, they try to go super smooth because you think about it from a manufacturer standpoint, if, you, if, there's, if there's wiggle room and tolerances, you'd rather err a little bit on the side of being too smooth perhaps flirting with baby's bottom than flirting with the nib feeling scratchy because the tolerance for people with nibs feeling scratchy is like zero. <laughs> Unless people, feedback is one thing, but actual scratchiness, it feels terrible. And it's immediately like, nope, not what I wanted a fountain pen for. 
send it back immediately. So they err a little bit, maybe a little bit on the side of let's maybe over smooth it, over polish it, especially I find with like European nibs, um, European broad nibs can happen a little bit more. We don't see that a lot on, on the Yovo, especially on the Yovo steels. They tend to be okay, but it, it really can vary uh, by manufacturer. So, and again, it's also difficult too because broad nibs are not as common. Um, like we, we, we sell kind of across the board. It's, it's not, a, not exactly fair numbers to pull because not every pen has a broad nib, but it's probably, you know, maybe five to 8% of the nibs we sell are broads. Whereas you're into like the twenties, you know, pushing upward of 30%, maybe on a fine nib. So it's like fine nibs far out sell, uh, broad nibs. Um, so there's just not as many of them. So, you know, if there's people that are having issues with broad nibs, um, you know, you might, uh, the word might, well, I don't know if there's more fine nibs and people might hear about it more. I don't know. It depends. So that there's some kind of factor there. I don't know the psychology behind that, but, um, I think usually what happens, what we notice is it's not, it's not new fountain pen users that are getting broad nibs. It's people that are pretty discerning. They generally know what it is that they want and they know how pens should flow. So if there is an issue with a broad nib, uh, then they are going to be able to self-diagnose that pretty quickly and speak up about that. Um, whereas somebody with a fine nib, maybe they don't, maybe they don't know how it should write or um, they don't know what's normal or what's not if they're newer to the pen hobby. Generally speaking, people who are new to the pen hobby are not buying broad nibs. Um, just that's a, that's a super general statement. I don't have any like data on how long people have been using pens, you know, uh, for our customers, but um, that's just my sense from kind of being in the industry and, and qualitatively just talking to a lot of, a lot of pen people. Um, so there you go. So that's kind of my assessment of the whole broad versus fine thing. But keep in mind, it's not like this is a major problem for, you know, all broads or all fines or anything. This is just of the nibs that have problems. This is generally what we see. Vast, vast, vast majority of them are great and you will not have any problems with them. But if you do have problems, maybe now you're just a little more educated on maybe why you can talk to us, talk to our team. We'll help kind of diagnose um, and you, uh, you are empowered. Thank you.